I am ready. Got my coffee. Not gonna lie, it's already halfway emptied. I made that right before lunch and then I had lunch with the kids and I love a hot cup of coffee so I ended up sipping on it a lot more than typical but I have my coffee so we are ready. A little bit of a story time because I feel like I'm going to get questions. What was in the little measuring cup is actually creamer. If you don't like story times, skip ahead. I have timestamps down below but I have to share this little funny it's, I would call it a mom moment, but it was actually my husband who did this, so it's a dad moment. He went to make my kids a cup of milk. They like to have a cup of milk right when they wake up, and so he was doing that this morning, and he poured creamer into their cups. Didn't realize it. He was about to, like, give it to them, and I was like, babe, like, did you give them almond milk? That looks a little different. It was creamer, so anyway, I just ended up putting it in another container so we can use it for our coffee. So that's what was in there. I just feel like I might get questions, but I just wanted to clarify and share with you a little funny parent story. I laughed. I thought it was hilarious. But anyway, today we are going to do an old-fashioned anti-haul. I was thinking about doing another Will I Buy It new makeup releases indie edition, but I actually have a lot of backlog when it comes to like products that I pin to talk about but I've never gotten around to. So I was like, you know what? Let's go back. And let's talk about those products and why they I never decided to buy them and just share with you guys. That way you guys can not only learn about new brands that you might not know about already, but also just to hear my reasons for not picking it up. So these are all going to be products at anti-haul. With that said, I am inspired per usual by these three beautiful ladies here, Samantha March, Angelica Nyquist, and Amy Loves Makeup. I always link them down below as the inspiration for these videos. Definitely check them out if you're curious. And I'm going to try to get better at leaving the Instagram accounts that I follow for new indie makeup releases. And leaving them linked down below in case you want to follow them and be informed as well. So I'll leave like the top couple. I feel like I follow a lot. All of a sudden I'm following like a million of them, but I'll leave the top ones that I use the most and that I feel like pop up and I find their recommendations helpful because they're really quick and on the new releases. So I'll leave them down below. And then of course when I include screenshots or the phone recording, you guys can see, I always make sure to leave in the handle of whoever I pinned it from. So I hope that is helpful as well. But let's go ahead and jump into our Instagram shout out for today. Today my Instagram shout out is going to Marcotte.Tracy. I hope I said that right, but Tracy, you are my Instagram shout out. You left a comment on my most recent post. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, you are my Instagram shout out for today. Thank you so much for interacting and commenting on my post. I really do appreciate it. And per usual, if you want a chance to be featured, all you have to be doing is following me on Instagram. I'm LadyKatie92. Interact with my content as it goes up, and then I randomly select someone to shout out in a video when I sit down to film. So now, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right into the products that we're going to talk about that I am not buying. If you're new to my channel, you may not know this, but I always put on a timer of about 20-25 minutes. That way I can keep myself accountable and, you know, just make sure this video doesn't get too long. For more my sake, just with having three kids, I need to make sure I'm able to film this. So I'm going to go ahead and start the timer for 20 minutes and then we're going to go jump over to my Instagram account and we're going to talk about as many of these products that I'm anti-hauling that I can fit within 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and click start and jump right over. Okay, first one I want to talk about. This actually just posted, or I just saw this from Motivate the Earth uh, right before I sat down to film, but Huda Beauty is coming out with foundation sticks, and I'm just... No, I think I own three different type of contour, or not contour, three different types of foundation sticks, and I just, I don't like them. I feel like they're too rough. Whenever I use them, I'm like pulling out my skin, and I just like a liquid. I feel like it's just so easy breezy. This is not that complicated, and I don't know, I just, I'm not a fan of sticks. I do think the range is very good. I mean, it looks very neat. I feel like a lot of people are going to be excited, but for me, I just, I'm not crazy about foundation sticks and maybe that's just me it looks like they're breaking the the foundation like the undertones down really well I like to see that but I don't know I just feel like it's a decent release but for me personally I just feel like foundation sticks are a little bit not like last year but I feel like they've been done a lot already and I having experienced three or four I forget how many I have I'm done with them so not gonna buy Okay, this next, I, again, I saw this morning, it is from, I got this from Indie Makeup Hotspot, but I looked at these and I was like, oh, P. Louise is coming out with new bases. But na na na. This is the brand Butte X Biscose. I'm going to click the brand. Butte X Biscose. Never heard of it before, but they're launching these little eyeshadow primers, or eyeshadow bases, I guess is what they're called. But am I alone here in saying like, oh my goodness, this is absolutely P. Louise? Tell me what you think. Like, the design just seems awful close. And I even went and found these are P. Louise, just for comparison. This is their ordinary, like, black, I think their skin tone colors, but then for their more colorfuls, I want to say they're in white, or they have done white before. But that's P. Louise. And then this is Butte Time Biscose, or whatever. I was very kind of taken aback, because like I said, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, P. Louise. But it's not P. Louise. 
However, I'm not going to be buying it. Um, I'm trying the P. Louise base. It's been okay, but I'm just not into the color eye primers or eye bases at the moment. But thought I would share. I would love to hear what you think. Do you think that looks like P. Louise or am I just crazy here? Let me know. Okay, next step that I'm not going to buy. This is from Kaja. It's a, I want to say, setting powder? Joystick powder. A brightening under, under eye setting powder. Okay, and not only does it look weird, but like watch how you have to use it. You use it like a joystick. Kaja is one of those brands. I'm not surprised they have this because Kaja had the little roller, like a paint roller for the highlight. So I'm not shocked that they have it, but it's so like gimmicky. I feel like this is so hard to use it. And you see how it's barely touching the powder. What happens like as you use the powder and the powder goes down, that joystick is like bare, or brush, whatever, is barely touching the powder. So is it going to be impossible to get the last little bits? And because of the handle, you can't stick it in more, it looks like, unless you're able to take that out. Way too gimmicky for me. Definitely not buying it, but had to share. Kaja gets creative. I gotta give him that. Estico did a collab with Neon MUA, and they're coming out with this little quad here, which I actually think is cute on the right half. Like, I think that red, honestly, is what's catching my eye the most, but I was kind of just going to see a pair with dupe browns. I will say Butte Bean did a really pretty look with this, so definitely check her out if you want some inspiration. But for me personally, with it being a little quad, and really the only thing that's screaming out me is that, I guess it's like an orange red, but ooh, blah, blah, um, level 99. That's the only shade that really grabs me. The purple is pretty. The other two are just, you know, neutral brownish tones. So for me personally, the one up quad is cute, but not gonna buy, but figured I would share it here. Okay, next up is Black Moon Cosmetics. I was so close, like geez close to buying this, but I finally decided not to. And one of the reasons was because when I saw these swatched, I felt like a lot of the top row, maybe the first three or four, I forget exactly, but they seemed more of those topper shades that don't have a ton of color. So I wanted to just wait. I am also inundated with new palettes. So I was like, you don't need a new palette. So just wait and watch and see. I know a lot of my friends are getting it. So I'm going to wait and see their tutorials and see if the eyeshadows look really vibrant, really pretty, then maybe I'll pick it up. But I don't know. I wanted to get it just because I've always wanted to try Black Moon Cosmetics eyeshadow formula. And this was actually a color story I was down for. I like the grunge, but still this bright color, like the blue is just so beautiful and the green mm. so I was going to buy it but I have bought a lot of palettes recently there's a bunch of palettes coming out that I want to get so I was like you know what you don't need this just anti haul it and just watch reviews and live vicariously through them okay this is from notoriously morbid this is dapper dark darkling darkings dapper darkings palette I don't know why I can't say that I'm so sorry but this is the palette and Looking at the color story, it's not bad. I actually think it could do some really pretty grungy looks. However, like the palette itself, looking at it, is just off to me. Like, I can't get down with it. I don't know if it's because maybe it's just super large palette and that's why there's so much space between the shadows. Either that or it's a regular size palette and then the eyeshadows themselves are teeny tiny. I can't figure out which it is, but whatever, for whichever way it is, I just don't like how it visually looks. There's just a lot of empty space. I've never tried anything from Notoriously Morbid, so I don't have any experience with them. But also, too, this is their packaging design. It's just not me. I'll put it that way. So that was another strike against. I was like, yeah, no, this is an easy pass. You're not getting it. Okay, this is from Revel Rouge Labs. I saw this when they swatched it, they teased it, they were doing a pre-launch and they hadn't had everything finalized, but they just showed the colors and the colors like, look at these colors, it looks so pretty. I wouldn't be as crazy about the glitter in the middle, which is ghosted, but oh, this color story was so beautiful. Like, look at that. Several of my friends got it. It seemed to be a really good palette. However, I just couldn't get down with the packaging. I mean, maybe it's me with young kids. Maybe I'm just a little sissy over here and just don't like scary things with the packaging. There's no pictures of the packaging, but let me see if I can find one real quick. It just wasn't my speed. It was very, uh, I think it was like that, I want to say. I forget exactly. And I can't find, I feel like it was just a touch different. Are they launching another palette? Oh, well, maybe that's an older one. Anyway, I'm intrigued about the color story. I think this brand does color stories very well, but like this is one of the packaging. I'm just not into the packaging, so I didn't get it. I'm anti-hauling it, but not going to lie, that color story is really pretty. Okay, another product I'm not going to be getting is Baby Bat Beauty. They are teasing this, or not they tease it, they launched it as a pre-sale, I believe. No, I think it's actually released now. However, I keep looking around, I keep going on their website. I went on their website, I can't find a picture of what the palette outside looks like. And Baby Bat Beauty, 
is the aesthetic that sometimes I just don't like it. I do know they said the shape will be in a bat, which is a bit of a deterrent for me because I just feel like that's going to be bulky to store. I mean, nothing against bats. I don't mind bats. They're a little, I don't know, rat looking, which makes them a little scary to me, but I don't have anything super against bats. But not being able to see the what the palette looks like before buying it, like literally the only thing on their website are the swatches, is a real big deterrent. However, just looking at the color story, it's a beautiful color story. I'd totally buy it, but I'm not going to get it at this time, mainly due to the fact that I don't know what the palette looks like. Saucebox Cosmetics is launching a palette and I just want to touch on this very briefly because I feel like many influencers on this space don't talk about them because of the scandal behind Saucebox Cosmetics and I get that because you don't want to give them more publicity. However, if you're like me, especially, you know, before I was on YouTube and you missed out on the little controversy when it happened and then later on you're just like why is no one talking about this brand? I'm going to try this brand and you unknowingly buy from a brand that could be problematic. That's why I'm going to mention this briefly, just in case you didn't hear about it, but basically Saucebox Cosmetics, they launched this like year-long subscription that was super expensive that people bought to get like releases, and then they still haven't filled it. They keep saying, they just like posted on this, I think this, um, this picture saying that they are going to be sending these out to their members who bought that really expensive membership to fulfill the membership like what they promised. So... It sounds like they're still intending, at least still saying that they're going to follow through on their promises. But anyway, all that to say, if you see this palette and you like it, just be careful. Maybe use PayPal so you can get your money back if it never shows up. Just be careful. Basically is all I'm going to say. I feel like I absolutely butchered explaining the controversy. So I will link a video down below from Fira Nix. And she went in detail and showed like receipts and explained, laid it out in like timeline, which is what I love, in a timeline fashion of how everything went down. So definitely check out that video before buying from them. But... I just thought I would share it because like I said, if you haven't heard about it, maybe you wouldn't know and maybe you would be wondering why no one's talking about this. Anyway, moving on, they're coming out with a new palette, but I'm not buying it. Okay, Beauty Creations launched this palette a while ago. I've had this saved for a long time. This color story gets me all the time. However, it's been so long, that's why I haven't bought it. But not gonna lie, anytime I see it, I'm always like, ooh, like, ooh, that's actually really pretty. I'm curious. I do have one palette from Beauty Creations. It's like a neutral palette that says Olivia. That's the only reason I bought it because it has my daughter's name on it. So I was curious to buy this to try the brand and try their formula and see how they do brights, but I never ended up getting it. And at this point, I'm not going to get it because it is an older release. However, like I said, anytime I come across this palette and I see it on you know, Instagram, I'm always like, oh, what palette is that? Like, ooh, that's really pretty. This is a brand Shea J Cosmetics or CSO. Um, this is a palette, again, they launched it a long time ago called Van Life, I believe. The color story is really cute. I want to say they launched it in, yeah, June. So it was like more summer and this just seemed like a very well-suited spring release. I ended up like saying, oh no, I'm not going to try the brand. For me personally, the only matte that excited me was the green and the orange, the brown. I just feel like the brown is a little, it sticks out a little bit. I mean, I guess you could pair the brown with the neutrals or I'm sure a lot of people enjoy browns, but I don't know. Browns with a bunch of bright tones, it's like, why would you want to use the browns when you have all these bright, beautiful colors in a palette? Anyway, all that to say, I thought it was a cute color story. I really like the middle shade, that pastel green, but I'm not going to buy it. M Cosmetics released the Minimalist Special Edition. This palette kind of caught my attention and honestly... Kind of makes me think of the Jungle Lights palette from Flower Beauty. How, however, I know Flower Beauty is so good, like the formula is so good, I would say just get that because I do also know it's uh, more affordable than LC, but I don't know. I remember looking at it a lot. I was tempted, but I just didn't want to buy an expensive palette full of shimmers and only five of them at that, but it's not bad. However, I'm not buying it. I didn't end it. I kind of decided not to, so hence why it's in this video, but it's not a bad color story. If you tried this palette, let me know if it was any good, if the formula was any good. Next up is from Alamar Cosmetics. This is their Birthday Suit Lip Liner and Lip Gloss. I'm not a big lip liner person at all, and I'm just a little bit of a lip gloss person. I prefer lip oils. Today I'm actually wearing a lip gloss from Glamlight. I just, lip glosses are sticky and they can be streaky. I just want a lip oil or something very feeling like a lip oil. So anyway, all that to say, I'm not super in it. I have to really like the formula. I don't know Alamar's formula, so I wasn't going to buy this. Okay, my internet is being a little stinker, so some of these aren't loading, and I just have to keep on scrolling, so we're going to move on to Glamour. This is their Neon Dreams eyeshadow palette. I almost bought this so many times because I really enjoy their neon pigments, and I was curious how if it would be easier to use, you know, pressed powders, and if it was just as good as their loose powders. However, it's just such a big palette, that's kind of why I decided to never buy it. However, still intrigued to try it. If it was at least half the size or less, like a little nine pan even, 
at least half the size. I understand some brands just like to have large palettes, but if it was half the size, I might have bought it. Nettie Burr Cosmetics launched three palettes over the summer, I want to say, yeah, July. They had the, oh, I forget what they were called, but it was like oldest sibling. It was like the siblings trio. It was like the youngest, I want to say this was like the youngest, middle child, and oldest or something like that. They had it broken down some way like that, which was really cute. I like the pastel. I almost bought the pastel one because I was super into pastels. Now that I have like 50 million pastel palettes, kind of glad I didn't. However, I decided not to. I've tried two other palettes before in the past and they were okay, but I thought it was a cute idea for the trio and being all sibling related. Clarity Cosmetics came out with Reign of Color and this really surprised me because seeing the cover of this and like what the what the artwork was for the front, I wasn't expecting this for the inside, but it was actually really pretty. I'm not saying it was like ugly or anything like that. It just surprised me. That gold shade, was it Marigold? Mar Magnolia? Can I read? I said Marigold. Magnolia? Very, very pretty, but it's a neat color story. I wouldn't have been opposed to trying it. I just, for some reason, kind of saw it was like, oh, that's interesting, but kept on moving and never bought it. Moria Cosmetics is a brand that I'm super interested to try. They, and they came out when July, over the summer again, with a Juicy Series palette. Moria, I mean, if my internet was working, I would go and see what new palettes they've launched. But this collection honestly caught my eye just because of this palette right here. It just looks so fun for summer with the reds and the oranges. Very pretty. I'm very intrigued to try this brand. I like how they broke up the color stories. I just feel like they're fun. Oh, this one too. Oh, so pretty. Interesting to pair like the greens and more grunge tones with such vibrant, not vibrant, but very pinky blush shades. I'm assuming those are blushes, but these palettes really caught my eye, but I never picked them up, so I'm not going to. However, Mora, cause I think it's Mora. I, I know I'm butchering it. I'm so sorry, but this brand I'm very intrigued to try and most often when they say they're launching something new I'm always like, oh, like that's actually really neat, but I haven't bought anything yet and I really need to. If you've tried the brand, let me know how they are. Their palettes always make me stop in. As Samantha March would say, do the double take. Glisten Cosmetics. I almost bought this so many times, like literally more than once I went to their website, added it to the cart, and then I would just talk myself out of it. But this is the 1991 palette, and it's like a neon, I want to say they were all matte shadows. However, if even if they all weren't, maybe that spirit wasn't, but this turtle shade and this Bart shade, so pretty. I wanted this so bad, but I just ended up saying no. I talked myself out of it. I haven't tried Glisten Cosmetics. I want to, but I wanted this to be the palette where I actually tried the brand, but I just kept talking myself out of it until I eventually didn't buy it. However, when I do see it, like now, I'm kind of like, ah, why didn't you get that, Katie? That looks so fun. And it's a smaller palette, which I do like and appreciate, but... I didn't try it. I do want to try Glisten Cosmetics though, so we'll see. Maybe next launch I will, but for the now, I anti-hauled this. I ended up not picking it up. Shikari Cosmetics, I'm always intrigued to try them. However, I'm not always super down for what they launch. Like this, for example, this palette, while I get that they're trying to be fun with the popcorn and the Coca-Cola, I'm assuming, or soda, and they got the candy puffs, the movie ticket, I understand that, but I feel like at least kind of go with a theme because I feel like the color story I see here has nothing to do with the outer packaging and that throws me a lot. Also the bulk, big and bulky packaging which is granted but if I like a color story and if I like a theme I'll put up with bulky packaging. However with this being such bulky and like outrageous packaging like look at that that straw and stuff like it's cute. I like the idea but it's just so extra and then looking at the products inside, it just seems so out of place. Like if they were able to mesh the two together and maybe do a color story around popcorn and at least, maybe not around the popcorn, but like the outer packaging more. And I mean, guess maybe they did. I don't know. Something about this palette throws me off so much and it just looks very misplaced for me. So I didn't buy anything. Um, and the contour palette too, while it's cute, it's not super like off-putting with it, you know, being so extra. It's just too extra for me. And I, oh, it's not a contour palette. I'm sorry, a highlighter palette. Um, I'm not that into highlighting palettes to buy something that extra. So I was really just looking at the palette, but something about the color story, maybe it's just too jumbled, but it just doesn't seem to flow. And so that's why I didn't get it. Morphe 2, they launched Morphe 2 over the summer. I don't like Morphe. I'm not going to try Morphe 2 because it's like a Glossier 2.2 or, you know, another Glossier brand. And you guys know I'm not a Glossier girl. Oh, Desi Perkins launched a new brand and I was excited to see. I was like, oh, maybe I'll, you know, try a new influencer brand, but it's sunglasses. 
your girl is not into sunglasses. I buy a one pair of like $5 sunglasses at Ross or TJ Maxx whenever mine breaks. So about once, it depends on my kids, but once every year or two, whenever they break, that's the only time I buy a new pair. And again, I pay around $10 for it. <laughs> that's crazy. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait to watch the replay of that. My timer's done. We're gonna keep moving and I'm just gonna finish this up, but I'm not a sunglasses person, so I'm not I'm not getting it. I anti held this right away when I realized that she was launching a sunglass brand. That's not me. And I know my timer went off, but I do want to finish it up since I was just talking about Desi's brand. Jackie Ina also launched a brand, and I was really intrigued the last time I talked about it. I mentioned it in a, a Will I Buy It, uh, talking about new makeup releases, and I was like, ooh, we'll see what she launches. She's a candle brand, and while I like candles, I'm just not that big of a candle person. I really like candles just because I always have little kids, and I'm always terrified with them in flames, and also those strong scents can give me headaches. So I like that she did something different. It's not for me, so... Again, another brand that I'm anti-hauling. All right, so that is gonna be it for my anti-haul video. <laughs> I seriously cannot believe that I scared myself with a timer that I set myself. But yeah, that is gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about all of these products that launched over the course of this past year. Some just launched today or just, you know, dropped that they are launching today. And they're just products that I'm not interested in for one reason or another or just talked myself out of and hence didn't buy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this style of video and I hope you didn't mind me going too far back. Let me know your thoughts on this style of video and if you did enjoy it, maybe I can do it again in the future. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for today's video. As always, if you did enjoy it, please hit the thumbs up button on your way out as it helps me in the whole YouTube algorithm. And if you want to continue getting daily content from me, I'm over on Instagram. I'm LadyKatie92, and you can follow me over there and interact with my content for a chance to be featured at the beginning of my videos. But yeah, with all that said, once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye, guys.